Let's talk to David Katz. He's chief investment officer at Matrix Asset Advisors. David, first of all, how did the year go for you? You know, because there were a lot. We talk about the Mag Seven, but you have names like General Electric that have doubled. What what, what powered your portfolio? Stockwood, the year went uh, relatively well for us. We have two strategies: value, which was very good, and we had five of the seven magnificent seven that we bought when they sold off last year. The dividend portfolio had a very slow start, but for the last two or three months is ending really strong. So we're feeling good about that, too. Our outlook on uh, bonds was pretty good. So we're, we're hopeful we get close in terms of what we're thinking about next year to what we uh, thought this year. I love that you just said you had five of the Mag 7 in your value portfolio. <laughs> Let us not forget what people thought about those stocks 52 weeks ago. That's a great point. You know, we looked at it this morning, you know, even though they've had a phenomenal year this year, the group average is only up 8 percent over the last two years. Mm -hmm. So you just have to remember, you're not guaranteed to make money in those stocks. Uh, they will fluctuate. And our outlook for them next year is good, but not nearly as good as it is now. And as, as you'd mentioned earlier, we do think a lot of the laggards, the groups that didn't do as well, are positioned to catch up and lead next year. It's so important what you just said, that the MAG-7 overall is up about 8% over the past two years, because we forget how bad 2022 was. And at some point, you have to sort of say, well, you know, for all the talk about whether to sell them next year, if these names don't start performing, they're underperforming. You could say they've underperformed. You know, if the market's supposed to return 7%, they're doing four per annum. That's not that great. Uh, well, for the last year and a half or two years, the market has done poorly. But you're 100 percent right. We just don't think they're going to have the 30 and 40 percent gains next year. If the market does 8, 9, 10 percent gains, we think that they can come in somewhere around there. There are areas like health care or utilities uh, or financials that didn't do as well this year that we think can outperform the averages. Small and mid cap also had a poor relative year. We think there's going to be a catch up there. So there are lots of places to make money. We don't think you want to look at the recent trends and try to chase them. What gives you the conviction for an area like healthcare, for instance, which other than the biotech stocks we'll talk about next, I mean, healthcare has not performed nearly as well as people expected. So, I mean, you know, you have clients you have to answer to. Do, you know, how confident are you about being in areas like that for 2024? We, we are very confident. You know, going into 23, we were saying the same thing about technology, which got creamed in the year before. And that it's paid off. In terms of healthcare, the reason that we're confident is the businesses have done well this year. The earnings have grown. Many of them are paying great yields, yet the stocks have done absolutely nothing. So the valuations are 10, 11, 12 times earnings. We think in a slowing economy where the Fed is going to be lowering rates, making uh, dividend paying stocks more attractive, it's going to be a really good place to be. And we're finding opportunities throughout healthcare. Companies like United Healthcare or the drug companies we think are particularly well placed, or medical technology products are well placed. So the, the whole group has lagged, and we think it's going to have a catch up rally. And we also think that if we're wrong on some of the things that we're looking for and on the economy, healthcare is going to hold up a whole lot better. What are your favorite dividend plays? Um, so right now, we like companies like Cisco, Medtronic, Nextera has been one of the poorest performing utilities. Uh, we think rates have dropped a lot over the last two months. Nextera has not recovered as much as it should, so we think that's a real good place to be. Uh, RTX, which is the old Raytheon, has had a poor year. We think that they're paying a nice yield. They're doing an accelerated share buyback, uh, stocks at a very attractive price. And unfortunately, we need a lot of the products that they make, uh, both in the U.S. and globally. Yeah, no, it, it, a lot of people have been pointing that out, obviously, lately. So I guess my final question would be about industrials, which we've seen the valuations in some ways showing uh, up to be more expensive than the rest of the market in a year in which the ISM still look pretty weak. But there's been individual stocks that have done quite well. What's going on with that group as a whole? It's exactly right. The group has been spread out. So there are some things that are richly priced and there's some opportunities there. So FedEx just got beaten up in the last week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that's back at an attractive level. The company just announced a one billion dollar accelerated share repurchase program, which we think is very bullish. Air products also has underperformed the market this year. Uh, their earnings have grown 10 percent. The dividends grown to 10 percent. Yet the stock hasn't done anything. We think that's another industrial that's a good place to be next year. All right, we'll leave it there. I'm just going to circle back to those big MAG7 uh, components. Like, I'll just throw an NVIDIA out there, for instance. Maybe you can name a few others.